What's up, bladers? It's Josh from BaseSupply.com, and today I'm going to be doing another Beyblade theory, this time talking about Ryuga, and if he actually died at the end of Metal Fury in his battle with Rago and Diablo Nemesis. Now, this is a huge topic, there's a lot of different answers, and I'm going to be going into everything in this video, everything. But before we actually start on that, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of you guys, um... Two days ago, Friday, BaseSupply.com went live for its first official drop, and it was a huge success in my eyes. There was so many of you that signed up for the mailing list, and there was a couple of you who actually ended up buying something on the first launch, which I was not expecting, you know? So I just want to give a huge thank you to all of you guys who have been supporting the channel and signed up for the mailing list and actually ended up buying something. Huge thank you. It means the world to me. And I do want to say that um, uh, details and updates on next month's restock is going to be revealed in a couple days. So just stay tuned to the site and uh, keep an eye out for the next restock. And I promise, promise there's going to be a lot more metal fights. So stay tuned. But now let's talk about Ryuga and if he actually died. So in the anime itself, we don't actually know, but in the manga, he's alive. Yes, you heard that clearly. In the manga, Ryuga is 100% alive. He did not die at the end of 4D. Um, there's actually a whole chapter about Ryuga in the Zero G anime, but don't worry, we're going to talk about that in detail later. Takafumi Adachi, the creator of Metal Fight himself, said that Ryuga's fate in the anime, though, is only known to the team that worked on the anime storyboards. Like, his fate is only known basically by the director and producer of the animation. Um, I've talked about him in a couple of my other videos. You guys should know that name by now. Takafumi Adachi, the creator of Metal Fight. He, is, he has been quoted saying this. Um, so yeah, in the anime, the question is still a mystery and up to speculation. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about the manga and then I'm going to talk about my speculations and theories when it comes to the anime itself. But first, let's talk about Ryuga in the Zero G manga and how he is actually still alive. So like I mentioned briefly before, the manga and anime storylines are different. Um, they were kind of the same for Metal Fusion, Metal Masters, they changed a little bit, and then they changed a little bit more after that, so that includes 4D and Zero G, the manga and anime storylines are not the same, um, they're basically like, uh, the manga is basically like a parallel story with, uh, with a different setting, so I just want you to keep that in mind when I tell you what happens, but yeah, let's go over the manga, uh, storyline, where Ryuga is alive and shows up, so, I mean, actually, before we even talk about that storyline, I do also want to mention, um, like I said, it is different for 4D. So in the manga, that bond slash, uh, I don't know, relationship that uh, Kenta forms with Ryuga in uh, Metal Fury, it does not exist in the manga. And because of that, Ryuga doesn't have to sacrifice himself or, you know, um, give his power away like he does in 4D to Kenta. Like, that doesn't really happen. So, yeah, um, there's that. And also in the manga, uh, at least uh, before um, they, uh, the way they talk about Ryuga is he's an ancient king of the Dragon Clan, and he's apparently 100 years old. Now, I don't know about that 100 years old talk. I don't know if they kept it in the anime. Uh, same with him being an ancient king. But they do talk about the Dragon Clan, if I remember correctly, a little bit in Metal Fusion. So I think that part of Ryuga's character um, followed through into the anime. And uh, so I am going to be talking about the Dragon Clan and him, you know, being like this king or whatever i'm going to talk about that a little bit later in one of my speculations but yeah let's talk about the actual story arc that um features ryuga being alive in the zero g manga so it, it takes place seven years after 4d um after that whole battle with rago and diablo nemesis and how jinka wins um it, it takes place seven years after that but it's also before sakyo meets zero so it's like right before we kind of uh see the zero g storyline that we know and we like saw or read i don't know um but yeah it takes place like right before that so sakyo and uh takunosuke are training together and uh dragoon leads uh sakyo to this volcano so apparently uh volcanoes are like 
uh, like they attract the dragons or the dragon base from the dragon clan. I don't know, something like that. But basically, um, it leads them to a volcano. And as they go to this volcano, Ryuga shows up, like out of nowhere, uh, seven years, like I said, after 40. And uh, he talks to Sakyo about the dragon clan. And uh, f if you didn't know, Sakyo is actually a distant member of the dragon clan. So this has also been confirmed um, that he is part of that same clan that Ryuga is from, but they're not, like, directly related, like, it's not like they're brothers, or, like, it's not like Sakyo's his kid, right, but, uh, they are distantly related, so, if I can remember correctly, um, uh, what is it, Sakyo's dad was directly related to Ryuga somehow, now, there's no details about that, we don't know if Sakyo's dad was Ryuga's son, Ryuga's brother, Ryuga's nephew, we have no idea, um, that relation, but it has been confirmed that Sakyo's father has a direct relation to Ryuga, but Sakyo's mother, however, was an ordinary human, um, and they call him a half-breed, or to Tokonosuke, uh, calls him a half-breed, so he's not fully, like, dragon clan blood, and, um, Ryuga even calls him out on that too, you know, um, he's not 100%, like, he doesn't have 100% of the dragon clan blood, like Ryuga does, so, Ryuga kind of rubs that in his face, and is like, oh, I mean, you, you have a little bit in you, I see, but, you know, you, you don't got it like me, <laughs> basically, that's what he says, um, but yeah, anyways, Ryuga and Sakyo then battle, I think Ryuga challenges him to a battle, and, uh, Ryuga wins, obviously, and uh, then he passes down some advice to Sakyo, who is his spiritual successor. So, Ryuga's Bay isn't a 0G El Drago, which is really weird, right? Because in the anime, every single Beyblade that was used was a 0G Beyblade. You didn't see any of the actual characters use anything from Metal Fight. And um, it's really weird, too, because Doji, uh, in the anime, uses Phantom Fenrir, right? But in the manga... He has a wolf 0G Beyblade, and it is a wolf Beyblade. It's not a 0G Beyblade. It's like a straight, like, hybrid wheel system Beyblade in 0G manga. But in the anime, they gave him a Phantom Fenrir. So that's really weird. So, I mean, like I just said, uh, when Ryuga battles Sakyo, he doesn't have a 0G El Drago. He uses El Drago Destroy DF-105 LRF which is supposed to be an evolved version of his original El Drago Destroy. So I thought that was really interesting too, um, because we actually did get that release, but like in a gold edition, it was like a limited edition. We did get the uh, El Drago Destroy with DF-105 LRF. So I thought that was really cool. That's what Ryuga is using in his battle against Sakyo. But yeah, guys, I mean, I just showed you like a lot of pictures from the manga itself. Ryuga is alive in the manga. So... I know this is really great news, and when I found out about it, I was like, yes, I knew he was alive. There's no way they could have killed him like that. But, unfortunately, um, like I said, the manga universe and the anime universe is not the same. It was in the beginning, but it wasn't, like, after Metal Masters, and especially not during Zero G. So, you know, it's good news that they didn't kill him off in there. I guess that gives you some kind of closure, but... We need to talk about the anime because it's in the anime where the big mystery lies of if Ryuga's alive or dead. So let's talk about the final battle with Nemesis. Done talking about the manga, let's talk about the anime now. What actually happened in Ryuga's final battle with Rago? So basically, I just want to do a really quick recap of the final battle that happened for those of you who haven't seen the 40 anime and for those of you who um, saw it a long time ago and don't really remember, here's a quick refresher. So, basically, Ryuga just shows up at, while all the Legendary Bladers are, like, strategizing and trying to attack Rago and Nemesis, like, together, you know? Ryuga just shows up and uh, decides to take on Rago by himself, without the help of the other Legendary Bladers. And, um, yeah, in that battle, uh, he kills Doji for, like, the 20th time, um, Doji goes flying, and, uh, then Ryuga, like, in this battle, uses an ultimate move, not a special move, not a dark move, he uses an ultimate move, quote-unquote, called Dragon Emperor Life Destruction, and, um, it does a lot of damage to, uh, Rago and Nemesis, but then Rago uses Diablo Nemesis' special move, Armageddon, 
And after doing that, I think this is the first time we actually see Diablo Nemesis' special move. I might be wrong, but if I remember correctly, I think this is the first time he uses it. And after using it, um, Ryuga goes flying and he like collapses to the floor and he passes out. He doesn't die. Okay. At least this part we know is confirmed. He didn't die at this part, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he collapses to the floor. He passes out. And then, uh, the other legendary bladers start battling Rago and, uh, they start asking Kenta to come help out. Even though Kenta isn't a legendary blader, they ask him to help out. And then Kenta like gets in his bag, yo, like I swear he starts remembering the bond he created with Ryuga um and all the memories and stuff and he starts blaming himself for ryuga losing uh i forgot what he said he was like uh if, if only i convinced him better if if only i got him on our side like this wouldn't have happened like this dude was in his bag yo i swear <laughs> but uh then he says uh he'll fight in ryuga's place and starts going crazy at rago and i don't know what happened to the other bladers but it's just Kenta and Flame Sagittario versus Rago and Diablo Nemesis. And then as this is happening, um, Flame Sagittario's like literally breaking, like the claws are falling out in C-145 and like it's a whole mess. And as that's happening, Ryuga wakes up for a second and um, gives Kenta this little speech on how like he believes in him and how he like trusts him and stuff and he wakes up and gives kenta his legendary blader star fragment he like launches his El Drago at kenta and uh then we see um then we see flame sagittario evolving into flash sagittario and then we see el drago destroy disintegrating and disappearing and literally a second after that we see the same thing happening to ryuga so now Flame Sagittario becomes Flash Sagittario, and it has the Star Fragment from Ryuga, right? Um, but also, uh, we also see El Drago and Ryuga, like, disintegrating and disappearing. So, that's what happened in the final battle. Now, what does that tell us? Well, it says that Ryuga just disappeared. I mean, if he really died, I feel like we would have, I don't know, like, seen his body... If he really died, I mean, people have died in Beyblade before and we have seen their body. I mean, I just talked about Doji dying for like the 50th time and every single time he dies, we see his body. We don't, we've never seen a character disintegrate the way that we just saw Ryuga disintegrate. Okay, so that's first off. And second, um, if Ryuga is supposed to be some ancient king from the Dragon Clan that's lived like for all this time... You know, it wouldn't be so crazy to say that he just went back to sleep, waiting to be a re a reawakened again. And honestly, this is what I think happened after this fight. I think he went back to sleep, waiting to be reawakened again. Where did he go? I, I really couldn't tell you. I have no idea. Um, but we also don't know what happened to him the first time that he went to sleep. If you guys remember in Metal Fusion... Um, before Doji discovered Ryuga and awoke him in Metal Fusion, um, he was asleep, and Doji's like, wow, like, uh, like, uh, it, it's crazy to see, um, Ryuga connect with El Drago after all this time, and, uh, he, he hasn't been awake in so long, like, like, Doji literally discovered this guy and awoke him up, you know, um, so we don't know what happened to Ryuga before that moment, because that was kind of the beginning of the entire series right so i'm thinking something very similar could have happened like a near-death experience ryuga could have experienced and he was just in slumber until he got awoken by doji so i'm thinking that something very similar happened after this battle where his el drago and him they kind of just disappeared and um they went back for slumber you know, to go to sleep, to get energy back. I mean, Ryuga didn't die after uh, Nemesis used the special move, right? Quote, unquote, die. He just passed out because then you see him wake up, give Kenta a little speech, and then pass on his power to Kenta. So he was alive during that, right? Um, and then he disappeared. Then he disappeared. So, I mean, I, I I don't know. Like I said, if he really did die at the end of this battle, I feel like they would have shown his body because they have shown bodies of characters who have died in Beyblade. Um, 
And another thing that I, I like almost forgot to mention this, but we see Ryuga's image in the sky after the final battle where Jinka defeats Rago and like saves the world. You know, we see Ryuga's image in the sky. And I think, I think that uh, this is hinting that Ryuga is still alive. You know, um, he, he seemed dead after uh, receiving that blow from Nemesis, but then he woke up to give Kenta the star fragments. So it's only after doing this that we see him disintegrating. And I think this could just be him um, getting rid of whatever star fragment, like last remaining power he had within him. And after getting rid of that, he just went into deep sleep again, waiting to be reawakened. That is what I think happened to Ryuga after this battle. Now, with that being said, what happened to Ryuga after Metal Fury? Because I just talked about what happened after this battle, and then the series basically ends. Jinka saves the world. We see Ryuga's image up in the sky, right? And then 40 ends. Boom, we're into zero G, right? And like all this time passes. So what happened to Ryuga after Metal Fury? Because there's a lot of things that could have happened. Because now we talk about Sakyo, right? And Sakyo um, got his Beyblade from... I'm going to tell you right now. I think he got it from Ryuga. But what he actually said in the anime was um, he got his Beyblade from a legendary blader. So, you know, um, there's that. So let's talk about Zero-G, Sakyo, and what happened to Ryuga right after 40 ended. So, like I just said, Sakyo says in Zero-G that he received the bay from a legendary blader, but as he says this, Ryuga's silhouette shows up behind him. And, I mean, dude, that basically confirms that the legendary blader who gave him his bay was Ryuga. I mean, come on, like, it, it, it makes sense, too, because since, like, Jinga and Ryuga were, like, ultimate rivals, right, in Metal Fight, um... And Jenga gave Zero his Beyblade. Wouldn't it just make sense that Zero's ultimate rival would also get his Beyblade from Jenga's ultimate rival, Ryuga, right? Like, doesn't that connection just make sense? You have Ifrit and Dragoon, the same way you have Pegasus and, and uh, El Drago. I mean, it just makes sense. And um, another thing is... Like, who else would Sakyo be talking about? Because he, this is like, he states this, that, yeah, I think uh, Zero was like, I got my bay from a legendary blade or Jinka, and Sakyo's like, well, you're not the only person that got a bay blade from a legendary blade, and as soon as he says that, Ryuga's silhouette shows up. So who else could he be talking about? If he was talking about Jinga, I feel like Jinga would have talked about it at least a little bit in the show, like he did with Zero, but he didn't. And like, I, I don't see anyone else being able to give um, Sakyo El Drago's power or a dragon's power, right? It, it doesn't make any sense. None of the legendary bleeders make sense, except for Kenta, because Kenta did get El Drago's power, right? But he got it um, in the form of Flash Sagittario. It's not like... It, 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 it's not like Sakyo received a star fragment, right? A star fragment is completely different. He he received the bay itself. And Kenta didn't have no dragon Beyblade, dude. So it, it doesn't... It, like, it couldn't be anyone else other than Ryuga. And Sakyo is clearly somehow connected to Ryuga. Because um, Sakyo's Dragoon is a descendant of El Drago's... I uh, Ryuga's El Drago. There's no one else in the MFB anime that could have passed down this dragon Beyblade to him when these types of dragon Beyblades are exclusive to members of the Dragon Clan. And um, if you saw me talk about it in the manga, like I know we said, manga universe and anime universe are different. But in the manga, it talks about the Dragon Clan. And it talks about how Sakyo is a part of it and how he is, you know, somehow related to Ryuga. His dad is directly related, which makes him kind of related to Ryuga in the same clan, you know? So, I mean... Like, Dragon Beyblades only exist in the Metal Fight universe in this Dragon Clan. And if Sakyo got a Dragon Beyblade and it was passed down to him from a Legendary Blader, that basically just confirms that he got it from Ryuga. Which tells us that Ryuga was alive. And on top of being alive, um, he, he on top of being alive, he was there and woke up in Zero-G. Because he had to give Sakyo the Beyblade somehow right? I mean, neither Jinka nor Sakyo confirm his death in Zero-G, right? 
And at the end of the Zero G anime, you can even see El Drago's image in the clouds. Like, that's insane. Like, why would they just put that in there? It's not a regular dragon. You had Wyvang, you had Garago, you even had Dragoon in Zero G as dragons. But that is El Drago. It is very different. So why would they put that? And here's another thing that I have is... um. I feel like all these speculations that I just said, I feel like they would have got confirmed. But the problem is that Zero G never had a second season. So I think El Drago's image in the clouds was supposed to hint that if Zero G continued in season two of Zero G, we probably would have gotten an anime version of the manga storyline between Sakyo and Ryuga, where they battle and they meet like that flashback. We probably would have got a anime version of that storyline, as well as the reappearance of Ryuga and probably his new Zero G El Drago Beyblade. But unfortunately, Zero G just finished after the first season and we didn't get any of those answers. I mean, I, I do think um, he was alive in um in zero g like I, I just told you i think he was alive I, I i don't think he died in 4d which would make him alive in zero g and uh i think he's the one that passed down his dragon beyblade to sakyo to be his successor but how would we get any of that confirmed when zero g only had one season right so i mean think of it this way if beyblade never had a third season or if metal fight never had a third season which was 4d um, we would all still think that Doji died in Metal Fusion because Ryuga, like, quote-unquote, killed Doji in the first season. But Doji reappeared in season three and talked about how he was still alive during that first season, right? And if we never got 4D, if we never got a third season, we would have no idea that that happened. And I would probably be making a video just like this on, did Doji actually die? I mean, we don't even know, dude. But like, yeah, so that's the problem. We didn't get a season two of Zero G. And um, also another thing is Doji died again in 4D. And if we didn't get Zero G at all, then we would have all assumed that Doji's dead forever. But he showed up as Robo Doji in Zero G. So... I mean, if Zero G had another season, I'm certain we would have seen Ryuga's reappearance in the anime, as well as a confirmed explanation as to what actually happened after 40. Because when Doji came back in Zero G, he actually explained what happened after Ryuga, like, killed him and, like, he got flown off of the, I don't know, the top of the mountain and just died, right? He provided an explanation as to what happened, and... I don't know. Unfortunately, I think the explanation that we deserved would have came in Season 2 of Zero G, but we didn't get it, so we just leave it up to speculation. But, I mean, that's really it, guys. I mean, these, like, I, I kind of explained what my, you know, thoughts were. Another thing I want to mention is nobody really dies, dies in Beyblade. Like, you're not actually dead forever in Beyblade. I mean, I know you guys have seen this. Like, I just mentioned Doji, who died in Metal Fusion, but then came back in Metal Fury with Rago, and then died in Metal uh, Fury, but then came back in Zero G as Robo Doji. Like, the dude died, like, so many times, but somehow he's still alive. I'm surprised he didn't make an appearance in Burst, dude, I swear. He would be the only person to come back in Burst, like, um... But no, and then there's also Ryuga, who's quote-unquote killed so many people with uh, with El, El Drago in the past. Like, if you guys remember in uh, Metal Fusion, he quote-unquote killed Kiyoya, Tsubasa, Hikaru. Um, they're all on hospital beds, too. Like, they're, like, all passed out, like, done, right? But then they all come back to life, every single one of them. So nobody really dies in Beyblade. I just want to say that, you know? So... To say that Ryuga is the only person that, like, actually died in Beyblade, especially with him being not only one of the main characters in the entire series, but also the only character with the dragon Beyblade, it it, it doesn't make sense. No, there, there's no way. I don't believe it. But basically, guys, I mean, just to wrap it up, um, Ryuga's fate is confirmed in the manga as being alive. And even though the manga and anime storylines are different... They're still similar, and uh, it would make sense for him to be alive in the anime storyline as well as the manga storyline, you know? Um, 
And on top of that, we see Ryuga's image at the end of the final battle in 4D, as well as El Drago in the clouds at the end of Zero-G, which hints at the fact that he is still alive somewhere. And um, yeah, I, I really just think that after his battle with Rago, Ryuga went into his deep sleep again like he did prior to Metal Fusion. And he was in the same state that he was prior to uh, Doji discovering him in Metal Fusion, just waiting to be reawakened. And I don't know, sometime after this, Sakio or, I don't know, uh, Takunasuke or someone else uh, awakens Ryuga during Zero-G. And he decides to pass down his power to the next person in line in the Dragon Clan, which obviously happened to be Sakio. And that's how Sakio got Dark Knight Dragoon. And just like how Sakyo is a descendant of Ryuga, I believe Dark Knight Dragoon is now a descendant of El Drago. So since Sakyo basically confirms that Ryuga passed down his bay to him, you know, because what other legendary blader could have passed down the bay to him, right? Um, so yeah, since Sakyo basically confirmed that, I think if we got another season of Zero-G, we would have been able to actually see the real backstory on everything I just said. Because if we did get a second season of Zero-G, Ryuga would still be alive, and he'd probably talk about what happened, what actually happened after his battle with Rago, just like Doji explained what happened in 4D. Um, and he'd be able to explain uh, his connection with Sakyo, and how he passed down his bay to Sakyo, and how Sakyo is related to him. And, um, oh man, and we would have been able to see a Zero GL Drago, man. Oh, really wish we got a season two of, uh, of Zero G. That really would have just explained all of this. But anyways, guys, that is my video. Um, I went over the manga and I went over my speculations. And in conclusion, no, I do not think Ryuga actually died. And I'm not even just talking about in the manga where it's confirmed. I'm talking about in the anime as well, where that is still a mystery. Based on all the speculations that I just said and gave to you guys, I really do think that Ryuga is still alive and probably in slumber and then woke up um, sometime in Zero-G to, you know, eventually pass down his power to Sakyo. So, I don't know. That's just my thoughts on everything. I did a lot of research on all of this. Had to find the manga and stuff. Had to go back in the episodes and see, like, stuff that happened. And that's just my opinion on everything. So I kind of want to know what you guys think about Ryuga. What, like, let me know in the comments below what you think happened to Ryuga. Is he alive or is he dead? If he's alive, what do you think happened to him? And if he's dead, why do you think they actually killed him off? Like, I really want to know what you guys think about all of this. So if you haven't already, hit that like button. And uh, hit the subscribe button so, you know, you're updated every time I post a new video to this channel. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.